got a couple of stories to share with you this morning. I'm in my studio and I've been uh, watching the news, watching the news and doing a lot of reading. See some, if you hear some rustling in the background, I'm just kind of moving around to uh, settle myself in because I don't want to wait because there's a lot on my mind and I didn't write anything down. So practically everything is based on memory here. Um, but in these stories that I want to share with you are real life events that have occurred recently. And I, I hear what a lot of people are saying on, uh, on YouTube channels and their interpretation of what a man is and uh, these uh, relationship dynamics and the things that are going on in the current world. And some of the people I definitely listen to, uh, believe it or not, is, uh, and the reason why I'm saying believe it or not, is uh, based on your own um, perception, okay? Because you wasn't there. So all you can do is believe me because you wasn't there to see me actually studying or, or listen to these people, which is the basic foundation of what belief is, okay? But I'm listening to these uh, online pastors and I put a smile on my face because uh, they won't do the same for me. Okay, they they won't they won't get an understanding. You know they, and I'm a, I'm gonna share that with you in a moment. Okay, I'm gonna tell you why I tell you this, and I've I've spoken with you with this before in the past in an audio, but I'm just gonna break it down a little further here before I go into my uh, lesson, my teaching. But I'm smiling because I'm noticing that I'm open-minded, sensible, very respectful, not judgmental. I don't put anything negative down there in the comment box, even though you know how I, what I know about religion. And uh, you know how I feel about and know about health and the current world. So therefore, you would think I'd be the first one to put something in the comment box or try to arrange a meeting or a debate or something of that nature but as I teach you is that nature will defend itself life don't need you or shall I say truth that's what I'm looking for truth truth don't need you to defend it it will defend itself through nature and through life so oftentimes when you think about debating someone most times it's going to be what do you call entertainment it's going to be just to entertain the crowd. Not much is based on learning when you are debating because you're coming from two different points of views. On the left, you might have a, a group of people who are just believers, ain'ts in the name of saints. Then on the other side, you have free thinkers. You might have the atheists. You might have the Muslims. You might even have um, other Catholics and other people who albeit think differently as well so they have a different perspective and therefore you're not really going to get anywhere during that time so it will be best for the learning it will be best for the learning and the lessons to be done one-on-one -on -one with that teacher so you can thoroughly absorb the information and compare that to whatever information that you might have therefore not to be distracted however getting on to this point is uh, when I was listening to some of the pastors speak, it reminded me of a, uh, a month ago to this date, to this audio. I encountered a, uh, a minister in a major grocery store. And how he approached me was more aggressive than non-aggressive, which is the same as they do in the church. It's as a child, I thought that ministers and pastors was angry, but really they were trying to put you in fear, in fear mode when they talk about hellfire and the devil and uh, life and death sort of things. And uh, that's those are the things that were on my mind as a child. 
I don't know if y'all had that experience. I have I always thought, why is this minister so mad? You know, why is he he talking like that? And he would always have a crease on his forehead. <laughs> he was always, uh, you know, aggressive, you know, not not so funny in his conversation, what he was doing. And this minister that approached me a month ago reminded me of that. And I see now why they have done that and why it's indoctrination, why it's not even and listen to me carefully. It listen, my American people, my Neils, listen to Morpheus, please listen. It's not that I don't like the church. OK, I know that the church is positive for some people. It's a direction for some people who cannot direct themselves, whether you like it or not. If that weren't true, then why are you in the church? OK, it's a congregation for those who can't congregate at home or who can't come together and make a positive energy at home in which your grandpa, grandma, family members are friends of the family. OK, are at the church. OK, they could be at home as well. You can make your own meeting at home. You know, you can congregate at home or at their home parking lot. Why would you have to go into this uh, indoctrination, not indoctrinated building or to do so? Is what those uh, what the indoctrination is really all about to get you all there so you can all be herded at one time okay so it goes to show that you go along with the program and you're actually just giving away your power realistically because what power do you have you are practically powerless when you're going to you're going to the other football's team uh, stadium okay you are the Buccaneers going against the Dolphins or you are uh, the 49ers going against the Steelers or something like that okay and when you go to their stadium you go to their town their city you're playing on their turf you're playing on their territory you know with their flags with their team with their um, their fans are around them and you are the visitor okay that's not saying that you are on losing ground it's just saying that you are playing on their soil so they have every range over you immediately by their support team and not a lot of people are going to want they're not interested never will be interested in allowing the visiting the visiting team to win okay to beat them at home which will be the worst so therefore you can't win why are you in the church you can't win playing in their field where you're underneath their ceiling their roof their indoctrinate their programs their pamphlets sunday after sunday monday tuesday wednesday whatever else they do choir services or whatnot you're going to lose but um anyway get to the story the minister which he claims himself to be which was more of uh, an assault than anything uh he began to uh <laughs> uh do like most you know how you doing this morning we start talking about health you know helping uh, the foods that he were he was purchasing at the time because i'm a I'm a spokesful person, you know, I speak to people, you know, no matter where they are and try to make myself uh, available and known. And by practice of trying to build up my channel and and getting my book to get some awareness out there. OK, so I've been known to talk to the strangers of people and it began to dwindle down in him telling me about what was going on in the world. OK, and he began to tell me that he was a minister, so forth, so on. He asked me what I do. And uh, I'm a, a plethora of things. You know, you know Morpheus. I am an apparatus of practically everything. Being an entrepreneur, my hands is in everything. Okay. So all I say is a teacher. Okay. And I keep it very simple. And uh, no need to cover the details. You know, just I'm just a teacher. And the proof is, again, my audios that you're listening to. You may not learn something, but somebody else is. You know, there may be something that might open up your eyes. You may receive uh, a lesson in an eye opener and I told him who I was and uh, uh, what channel that I have Leonce aka Morpheus and uh, Morpheus is the title that was given to me by my viewers and by people not by myself I didn't make that up people have called me Morpheus okay so I continue to adopt it because that makes me um, a lot known to my followers and you and other people who would identify my name and everything like that okay so the assault came when I began to explain that to him say yes I am Leon C also known as Morpheus and he stopped for a minute and uh, this guy was uh, six four 
I'm not 6'4". I'm not that tall. I'm pretty tall. Pretty tall and intimidating. But he was 6'4". And he began to tell me that he was a uh, an ex-military. Um... And that's when he said, you know, yeah, you know, I, you know, I run my own church and, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a deacon of the church and so forth and so on. So he was thinking that his, uh, his, him being taller than me and an ex-military that he has something over me. Now, I don't need to explain to you about how and what I think about and because my other audio logs explain that to you, if y'all been following my audio you know me at this time being alpha and red peel you know i had my fangs out okay i was ready to go okay i don't play that i don't care how tall you it's even better then actually i don't stand by uh never did stand by challenging someone who is at my level or lesser i always look up to someone who's at a greater level because it gives me a better challenge okay i told you about that one of my audios you don't challenge anything unless you have something to prove but at this time, the challenge came to me. OK, and I don't condone violence. I'm not saying that it was all about that. But this is a psychology is what I'm telling you. He was using psychology because he's used to being an intimidating pastor. Again, that's how they are able to put you in fear mode by talking about hell, hell, fire, uh, hell and brimstone, evil and the stuff that could possibly happen in your environment to get you to sign up to the indoctrination because you're scared for your life. OK, so he thought he could pull that cloak over my eyes that he could bridge fear into me and he started leaning in. And I'm just standing there, you know, at Gantz, just looking at him level eye, not moving an inch, not even budging. OK, because I'm in a position right now, OK, to not debate. OK, but to figure out where this man is coming from. But I'm absorbing all the information. That's what's best for you to do when you're talking to people. There's no need to be offended if somebody's trying to throw you off guard or throw you off your game. OK, you listen to what they're saying and you don't get emotional. I don't get emotional. Never. I don't I don't get in the form of getting emotional because I can't learn that way. OK, and I'm going to leave it very simple at that. So what came next was a very interesting thing. OK, because of his being so used to uh, being a shepherd over sheep. OK, in the church, he's so used to being over shepherds in the, ch in the in, over. He's so used to being a sheep over shepherds. OK, in the churches where he began to go even further. Now, this man don't know me. OK, he doesn't. He never followed my channel before. He's not like you who are listening. OK, he don't know about what I teach or how I teach it. OK, he didn't even acknowledge the fact that i just explained to him that i didn't name myself morpheus okay people named me that i was titled with that okay it was it was placard that for people to understand who i am okay and so he stopped me stride with his uh, so-called fear mongering and he says this he says you know only jesus is morpheus you're not morpheus only jesus is morpheus and I'm thinking to myself, this guy didn't hear anything that I just said. He did not even hear what I'm saying. All he did was go straight to his programming of fear. Fear mongering. That's all he did. And you're nobody. You're not Morpheus. You're, you know, you're just a regular person. Only, only Jesus is Morpheus in the way. And either you buy by his word or you are willingly ready to sign up to hell. And I'm, I'm just quiet at the time. OK. And I begin to smile very, very slowly. I'm smiling very slow. And to tell you a little bit something about Morpheus, about me. OK. If you all ever met me, and there's plenty of people who uh, who have. OK. If we are ever talking and I smile very slowly, that's not a good sign, as you would think it is. If I'm smiling and I smile slowly, not fast with a with a chuckle, you want me to chuckle. You want me to chuckle and you want me to be immediate with my smile. And I'm just laughing. OK, you want that. OK, if I'm not laughing and I smile very slow. OK, that's a problem. That's a sign. I'm telling you now that's who I am. You don't want me to do that. By that time, that's red flags. That's for you, that's time for you to stop laughing and be like, okay, what's what's wrong? Like, what did I say? What 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 did I do? <laughs> okay. But I smile I smile at him. I start smiling real slow when I look straight at him. 
And the only thing that came out of my mouth was, okay, all right, okay. And to assure him, to get him to stop talking, I said, you know what? Okay, you're right. You're right. Okay. And you would think at that time, okay, Morpheus, it's time for you to debate. You know, Morpheus, it's time for you to, you know, let's see what you can do. You know, kick your Ferrari into gear, right? You would think so. But as I teach you, okay, I practice what I teach is who I am as well, is there's times where you have to let things be. Let nature be nature. Don't stand there and de listen, you can't debate with the fool. You cannot do that. You can't debate with an idiot. They're an idiot for a reason. He's in his position for a reason. This this isn't his first rodeo, nor is it my first rodeo. So there's no need to sit here and debate him on something that he probably already knows anyway, because that's their programming. The programming of the indoctrination is to indoctrinate you through fear, is to put you in a, a compromised position where you don't know yourself. You're unsure about who you are or the skin that you in. Life is based on you knowing who you are and you being comfortable in the skin that you are in and loving yourself, which is very important. When you love yourself, you listen to me, when you love yourself, you will not allow yourself to be deceived or to be in that type of indoctrination to begin with. OK, you're going to question and you're going to set yourself up at, at, a, at a higher standard above the deceptions that they want to put in your mind whenever they tell you that you are a sinner or you are going to hell for being free for living for thinking for yourself for deciding a different path than their religious indoctrination then they'll tell you that you're going to go to hell that you are insignificant in the eyes of god you're going to be cursed you're cursed with the curse okay you are you're not going to be satisfied with that that's not going to make you smile that's going to be an insult and it should be an insult to you to tell you that you are nobody until you take the indoctrinated program. <laughs> OK, so obviously there's no need for you to debate. You can see this person for what they are, you know, that they are they are evil incarnate. I didn't call them the devil. I don't call them the devil like uh, they would call me, you know, oh, Morpheus, you are the devil. You're you're misleading people. Your channel is of evil. You are uh, you. You are of no good. You are trying to teach people um, how to uh, go against the, the go against God in which that's not what I'm doing. When you listen to my broadcasts, when you listen to my my audio, you will notice that I am all about people. And let me tell you something about that. OK. Also, what I've also studied while being out in my studio is um, I have noticed there's a lot of people that are talking about the self, meaning that when, when times are emergency, they want to make sure that they are the ones going to be the first one to eat. They take care of themselves and protect themselves and so forth and so on. I understand the point of survival. You got to do what you must do to provide for yourself. I know, you know, you have to put food on your own table, make sure that you are breathing and that you are well taken care of first. But I'm a softy when it comes to people. I can't think like that because I, I love people. I care about you. I would not have made this this audio or my audios for you. You are my inspiration as to why I've created this channel because it's our channel. And oftentimes I am going to do my best to listen to your um, your comments and your emails whenever I can. You know, I do what I can to adhere because you are Neo and I don't believe in you. I trust in you. I trust that you are a superior being. I trust that you are better than what you ever used to be. as what they say, make America better again, that you are better. It's just that we are dealing with a lot of confused people who is trying to destroy America and want America to suffer. OK, I realize that there are people who want nothing for the country, for you, the future or for humanity, but to continue to put you on the rat wheel. All right. And so my task is to free you from that because I'd want somebody to do me that as well. I want somebody to free me. I would want someone to tell me the truth. I would want someone from somewhere to look at my life and uh, and see me as significant, not insignificant are a program to be a deceived okay manipulated right so let's let's make clarity on that however getting back to this um 
as my memory serves me let me see if I can pull out some recent because I had some papers just recently that inspired me further in making this audio I've written it down somewhere it might be in my pocket Let's see if I can pull it out okay here it is I think it's okay I got it I got it I wrote it down a piece of paper here there was a an emailer emailed me something about um, he said this he said that he had a, a hard time dealing with the idea of God and Jesus being a Trinity he had a hard time trying to uh, think about that and I understand him what he meant he was saying that uh, why is it that you have to go through a gesture or Jesus as in y'all description I say gesture in order to reach God you know then there's an expression that that gesture is God <laughs> Jesus is God type of idea and uh, a lot of you are y'all know that it's lame you know the thought is uh, redundantly ridiculous and very stupid of thought you know it's just very retarded and uh, it's it's very it demises your thinking okay and actually it dumbs you down if you ever think about that type of thing and you accept it that that gesture or for you some of you who don't understand who Morpheus is that Jesus came down from some sort of uh, spaceship called heaven um, which was indeed the uh, in your description God okay to take on the manifestation of flesh uh, in order to uh, sacrifice himself upside down on the cross to save you okay so if you want to look at it in detail it's like this okay you got this spaceship called God God decided that man was suffering so he wanted to save man from man's self by sacrificing itself on a cross by coming down in the manifestation of flesh or human in order to uh, know what human feels like in order to deal with human suffering and therefore basically die as a human as well for the sake of all other humans okay so then you that's when you come up with the trinity of god son and holy ghost are just gesture dude actually being god but yet in some passages of your indoctrinated book saying that uh um, what was that saying that uh that gesture is the son of god you know that and you have the story called god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son you know you would think okay why would you say that you're you're sacrificing your only begotten son but yet it's actually you you know so here's the confusion and there's the conflict there then of course the ideal of them is that they don't know how to get their story straight okay how can you but it's a lie so why how why would it make sense okay so the argument is the the pastors are you so-called uh bible thumpers and your uh what do you call that your theologians and just shoots in them will try to make it very convincing you know they put it down there in the comment box to make it sound good for you to make it sound sense make it make sense but to you and you know it don't make sense okay because you got two different people but yet they're the same persons but yet they're claiming to be father and son you know why would God say that it's the son of itself you know why not say that I'm God I'm coming down in the flesh as God to sacrifice uh, myself for you and go back into the heavens as God okay but it wasn't like that you know you have this idea of son son of man or the son of God or God sacrifices only begotten son not sacrifice himself or itself okay so you have people who are confused but i'm gonna leave that alone altogether because that's just a lie trying to make up another lie trying to cover another lie and then you're going to come up with other theologians and so-called bible thumpers and scholars who are going to try to correct morpheus and try to make it sound good and better because it's all stupid all together when you think about it okay it that's just happens when you lie you got to cover the lie with another lie that don't make sense okay but we're going to wipe that off the table and I'm going to consider it to be irrelevant because that's not the point that I'm making here. The only point that really matters at this point is the fact that this man says how and why. He emailed me this. Okay, don't think Morpheus came up with this. This is you people. Okay, he said, listen, it don't make sense when I am trying to reach God. But in order to reach God, I have to reach Jesus first. Okay, let's keep it. That. That's the point that I'm making right there that's the point of this conversation okay i'm bridging breadcrumbs to you here 
Okay. And this is the question that I'm answering. So that'll let you know that if you still want to get on the Trinity and you know, God to love the world, he sacrificed. No, no, Morpheus, you are wrong. No, 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 no. That's not what the Bible said. You know, no, that's not what they meant. And you and your twisted philosophy of your indoctrinated programming to try to correct me uselessly. Okay, the students don't care about that. We're not we're not sitting here listening to you and your idea of Trinity. <laughs> okay, that was uh, pre made and made up. OK, we're talking about in this classroom, the subject is why is it that to reach God, you got it. OK, the idea to reach God, you had to go through Jesus. OK, that is the question. <laughs> OK, that's where we are on right now. So check this out. Here is what I know. OK, without your Bible in front of me, don't need it. Never did. Never going to unless I'm going to put it in the fireplace for kindling. OK, that's the only place it belongs. All right. And whatever else religion that you have, I don't have none of that in my house. You want to know what I have in my house? I have a library in my house. I have a bookshelf in my, my house. I got encyclopedias. I got dictionaries all over the place. OK, I read real books and I have authors who I know that exist. That is there that you can look them up. OK, authors of all kinds. All right. All over the place. Daniel Steele, you know, Steven Spielberg. OK, um, what's that? Um, Megan McComer, you know, Steph, all the rest. The list goes on. The list goes on. OK, of your famous authors and writers. That's what I read. That's not going to be kindling. That's going to be um, good lessons and good learning from real people who actually exist today and did exist in the past. Okay. And written it with their own hands, not by several 12 other people who first of all, didn't exist. And which is basically poetic people who knew their time, who wrote things down as to lessons learned of that time, not being created as a human, a book of human manual control. That's not what a real book is about. However, here is a story I'm going to give you right now, which is a real life story that I need to break it down to bring to you. There was indeed a time where there wasn't a Internet connection where you can go online and figure out what your account was or your money from wherever it goes to your bank. OK, there was a time where it was like that. And uh, there was this gentleman who was stricken. To the point where he was handicapped and stuck at home and uh, this man over time um, began to work at home and he did things around the house to make money and to provide a means for himself and uh, he had enough money to um, to hire someone to be in control of his money I think let me see let me where's these people at make sure I get this right it's in my pocket Let's see they're called the banker the thief and the wife that's what the story is but it's real the banker the thief and the wife okay um the first person that he wanted to help him was someone who was considered as an assistant in his home the teenage boy who was growing up the teenage boy was about uh, 19 something to 20 Okay, you say, that's not a teenager. No, it is. Okay, it is. <laughs> it is. Um, and so the boy was helping him out, and he started building up uh, books and items at home to sell them. Okay? And to the point where he needed to uh, duck his money away underneath the sheets, put his money away in different areas and stuff like that. Okay? So he asked his uh, assistant guy that was there, that was, you know, 1920 getting older from there because he did it for a while it took a couple of years so you can imagine by this time the boy was probably 23 24 or so forth so on to uh procure him a mate okay and the mate in the form of a wife so to use some of that money go find a wife dress the house up stuff like that so the wife was more like an assistant but she was a wife nonetheless at that time um he was able to get him a woman Okay, he was able to do that in those days. You could do that in those days. You could say, okay, find me a good woman. They were always available. You know, they weren't online and they weren't looking for DMs and you have to pay their way and all that dumb nonsense that we deal with today. It wasn't online dating where she's looking at your credit score, how much you make per year. And if you're nine feet tall, 
Okay, it was women who just was happy to be in a relationship with a man because men were the prize, whether they was in a wheelchair or walking. Okay, not today. <laughs> so he uh, gets this girl. He said, what about a girl for, for himself? And he had somebody that was on the side, the uh, 23, 24 year old boy. Okay, he had somebody who will come by if he wasn't there to assist him with continue to be the helper for this man who was in a wheelchair making money. So over time, he continued to make money. He didn't know he was building up money, was stacking up even faster. And this wife figure now that he uh, was, it was, she was procured for him by this 24, 25 year old boy now um, was the one who started to take up the task even further uh, around the house, clean up, fix things up, put the boxes together, the items that was going to be brought and sold. OK, to where that that boy who was 24, 25 growing up was uh, didn't have to bring his side chick there to help. So he would stay. He would come by every now and then fix up things. Now he became the uh, you would say the steward of the house. He became the go to man, the in between guy, the middleman, so to speak, between him and the outside world. Even though he had a wife there, he's, his wife was only limited to certain duties as it was in the old days. You know, she wasn't allowed to vote. She wasn't allowed to go out there and uh, uh, what do you call that? Get into the mainstream. You know, this is a real life story. So she was limited. You know, she was at home just to be a wife and clean up and take care of his manly duties. So forth, so on. OK, that's what the boy was there for. You know, 24, 25 year old, getting older, 26. OK, so what happened was he's like, OK, we need to find somewhere to put this money. You know, let's, let's set this up to where I can get a hold of a banker. So we could, uh, you know, stash his money somewhere. OK, so the boy goes out and again, procures a banker. And this banker is assuring him that he could, you know, hide his money, put his money away in a safe place, safe bank place. Right. And um, the boy was agreeing with the banker, say, oh, he's a pretty good banker, so forth and so on. So he began to continue with interactions between uh, the, the 20 you say 26 27 year old now boy and the banker so what the boy would do now no longer a boy he's a man he's, he's the middleman now he would stack up the money put it in a bag and uh go with the banker to stash the money away or sometimes he would take the money to the banker and the banker would stop by every now and then to assure him that the money was safe in the bank and uh there was paperwork for it that was supposedly trumped up right supposedly there uh, to let him know what his money was and how much he had in the bank, so forth and so on. Okay, as the list goes, the story goes. All right. So, uh, during that process, he was going through health. He was going through his uh, his physician. Doctors would stop by to make sure that he was okay and to tell him what his status was. And the doctor said that he would never uh, heal again, never walk again. The usual story that you hear sometimes. You're never going to get healed. You know, that story. And he believed that, so he got comfortable in that zone. But time has went on where he started feeling his legs again. He started getting better. He wasn't. It seemed like he was going to get better. And uh, the doctor gave him a misdiagnosis. Uh-oh, uh-oh. A misdiagnosis and uh, he started moving around on his own in the house to where he started doing his own tasks cleaning and cooking and uh, the wife that was there pretty much started to become pointless she started to uh, get bored and needed things to do so he would actually send her out just to do some shopping or something like that so the guy started feeling good enough to actually leave the house and to do things on his own, which was miraculous. You know, people were seeing him say, oh, we thought, never thought you'd leave again. And the funny thing about it is he didn't know that he was going to be rich. He started making money while he was in the house with the products that he was making. He was becoming famous. His products was known throughout the world. You can say, where was it? It was in Europe. <laughs> this was in Europe. OK, um, now it's coming to me. The stories in Europe. And so he was he was well known. And uh, he said, you know, I need to check on my uh, banking account and stuff like that. And so he, you know, he uh, gets in contact with his middle man now, you know, 28, 29 years old. Right. Um, and he said, OK, where's this bank at? I need to see my money. I check up on the banker. And he began to 
kind of uh, what was the story? How the story go? To try to placate him, play him off. So, oh, you shouldn't. You know, you don't have to do that. I'll I'll go do it for you. I know where your money is, and I can I can get the banker for you. And the man now getting better, you know, able to walk, and he's he's supposedly a uh, a rich guy now. You know, in those days, a million dollars was rich. You know, he had one million. That's a lot of money, you know, 900,000 or 800,000, 700. The list goes on. You know, you, you had pretty much, you was well known. You was well established during that time. And so the, the boy kept playing him off to the point where he said, okay, no, no, go home. I'll go find him. I'll go find him. Okay. And so the banker uh, shows up at the house after he goes home. Um, and uh, he tried to say, you know, I need to see the bank, see where the money is. I need to figure out where it's at. You know, you know, show me where's the bank at and show me how much money. I know you've seen, the, I've seen the paperwork, but I want to go see it for myself. I want to go see it. Like, okay, fine. You know, but, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's there in the bank, you know, it's here in the paperwork. It says it right here and he's pointing to the numbers, right? Pointing to the numbers. And it looks kind of accurate to what he's counted when he was at the house. You know, okay. Yeah. This is how much I've been making this sort of, uh, okay. I see that. Right. As I go, so you know, the, the bank is there. The bank is there. So what happened was this to make a long story short, because it get kind of complicated from here on out. Um, he wasn't allowed to see where his money was. And the banker and the 20, not 29, 30 year old boy now, man, um, kept placating and playing him off where he wanted to actually uh, withdraw some of that money, large amounts to build another house do better for himself because he's walking now now he wants to buy uh by that time i think they was uh working on those model yeah, what's the model t's there's the older cars i think model t's or something like that not the cars that you have now they're the old cars the old model cars that you'll see in the museum but he wanted to purchase several of them you know at that time okay he wanted to go out and spend his life you know he didn't know he was you know he was really getting somewhere and the numbers that he saw was impressive and it was a miracle they didn't never thought he, they never thought that he was going to get better especially the wife that was supposed to be, be there okay she herself was benefiting from the fact that he was enabled okay she was a part of it as well uh to come to find out that uh later on that they were using his money they was using him as a form to provide for themselves the banker the thief and the wife the wife was there as a plot to make him feel better and comfortable for him just sitting there and not doing anything for himself the thief guy which was 19 20 years old growing up to take benefit of him and take advantage of him okay on a constant basis till the age of 30 uh was using the money for himself and actually paying off the banker as well to use the money and the banker didn't put the money where he was supposed to put it at the banker was getting rich off of this guy because they never thought that he would get better. Okay. And so come to find out they spent most, if not all of this man's money. And he practically had nothing to himself to where they ended up needing to pay some of that money back. No, they didn't pay the millions back. No, they could not. Okay. But they were considered scolded. You know, they, he lost his, uh, the banker lost his title, his so-called establishment. The thief was in prison for a long time. Okay. The, uh, the wife was disshamed, but the man there, he lost practically everything. He worked that he worked that, that entire time at home, not getting it anywhere. He thought he was. OK, so there he was walking now and well to do for himself. But it's like he was at ground zero again and all his work there was null. It was pointless. So the part of this story is between your idea of God and this middleman. Is that it's the same thing. You're sitting there and you don't know this God person, but you got gesture there telling you. And it's not gesture. It's a minister. It's a pastor. You got this man sitting in your face talking about what God is, what God can do for you, who is God, telling you who your heavenly father is. And you don't have direct contact. There's some people say, well, you know, you got to have personal comp. You have personal relationship with God. No, you don't. No, you realistically don't. Most time you have a personal relationship with the indoctrination. You got a personal relationship with the books, with your religion, with the minister standing there preaching to you or uh, indoctrinating you from a book. OK, that's the that's the thief. That's the uh, who's that? Who that? That's the banker, the thief and the wife are standing right there in front of you. And you're not understanding that you need direct contact with God. Why would you want to worry about a gesture or a Jesus dude 
saying that, no, I am the way, the truth and the light. And you can only get to God through me. OK, which is another contradiction. If you're saying that, then why don't you just say, OK, I am God. I'll need to say that, you know, I, you know, I and my father are one type of thing. I'll need to say that I come from God here to uh, uh, be on a cross for you or die for you, which he didn't say anyway. OK, that was Apostle Paul and John talking that stuff. OK, anyway. Um, so why would you need to say that? You would just say, no, here I am. I am God, point blank, period. But it's not. It's a middle person. You know, so they'll tell you, you got to get through God. You got to get through Jesus to get to God. OK, type of idea when actually they're just telling you in physical form that you are sitting there in the church and you got to go through the pastor's indoctrination to get to your ultimate power, because still Jesus ain't standing in front of you. The gesture dude isn't shaking your hand, ne never shake, shook my hand. If, if they shook your hand, you know, good luck for you. OK, that that's a story. And uh, that's a story for the sci fi channel. OK, you go to somebody else's channel for that. As far as what I know and what I've seen, okay, no dude uh, have approached me with uh, with holes in his hands, okay, and talking about here I am, I'm Jesus. No, absolutely not. Okay, you are still sitting there just like I was and everybody else, being spoon fed by the uh, by the banker, the thief, and the wife. <laughs> okay, but you're not understanding what this emailer was saying was why should I have to go through that? Why don't I go directly to God? Why do I need to go through you to get to God? Why don't I go straight to God? Then, of course, you have passages in the Bible that tries to change the programming up. What that means is they know that you're going to come up with cognitive dissonance, but they want to increase that. They know that you're going to question. They knew and know and the pastor know because they go they go to school. They go to school to teach you, to indoctrinate you. They are good psychologists. They know that you're going to question they know that you're going to get to that point to where they'll say, why do I need to listen to you? Why not listen to God, to God himself? They know that. They know that. So then they have points in your Bible and in your scriptures and your ministers are programmed to tell you that you can't get through God unless you go through the teaching or the lessons first until you get through. Uh, you can't hear the word of God without the shepherd, so to speak. Let's just make it simple. There's so I know about you and y'all special languages and programming. Y'all going to try to put down there. Oh, you know, the pastors say actually this. <laughs> you're, you're wrong. You're, you're wrong. Uh, uh, Minister Morpheus. That doesn't that's that's not what he meant. You know, you're going to have to you're going to try to twist it up and try to make it sound good to convince me and everybody else in the comment box that you are smart. OK, when it's irrelevant to the subject, because it's still the same thing. Basically, it's this. They are telling you that you can't get to God unless you go through the programming first. They are the shepherd. You are the sheep. You'll get to God by going through the shepherd first, going through the programming, you know, committing your sins and, you know, acknowledging that you are a sinner. No good. You know, you hate yourself, so to speak, basically. OK, because you've been born naturally and they want you to think that you're unnatural. Then you'll you'll see some sense of God when every day you wake up is midair. You go to sleep midair. You got a Bible in front of you. You pray midair. You light candles midair. OK. There's nothing like the truth. And what I mean by nothing like the truth, if that was the truth. OK, just check this out. Do you realize that the nation will be different? Do, don't you know that gesture would be your uh, your morning news caster person? Don't you understand that? This be it. This be real and childish with this at the same time. Jesus will be your newscaster in the morning. That would be the very person that's cooking you dinner and eggs and breakfast and whatever else. That would be the person driving for you, not some automatic car, autonomous car with a computer system in it. OK, that will be the uh, the person uh, at the pilot of your airplane. But it's not, you know, it's a paid uh, gentleman who have been in the academy of flying to know how to get up there and to teach you aviation, so forth, and so on. OK, and working with the FAA to get you safely from uh uh, from Washington DC to Florida if possible or maybe to China you know when whenever it opens up <laughs> okay so that person's not there you're seeing human people you're seeing people before you're seeing your wife cook f for you in the morning if she does that you know or leaving your uh, food on the oven or warming the water up for you or making coffee or it's your CEO or your bosses that are on your job that are talking to you every day and maybe giving you some good news or maybe uh, shaking your hand and giving you a good job, a pat on the back or motivating you. OK, it's regular people every day, but yet you're still looking up for some invincible ghost to be there for you. 
when in our actual reality, as I've told you in my other audio, it's people. It is people that are there before you and they're not Jesus Christ. You know, they're human beings. OK, otherwise they tell you what they are. What you think Jesus Christ would be ashamed if he was right there in front of you? It was he would say, well, I am Jesus Christ. And fact, factuality in history, it wasn't Jesus Christ as if it was named. It was Jesus the Christ, not Jesus Christ. Christ wasn't a last name. The Christ was title. OK, like Leon C, a.k.a. Morpheus. Morpheus is the is titlement, is the description. It is what people call me, not as in last name or that's what I am, who I am. OK, even though that's what I do, even that's what I teach. And that's my angle of breaking you out of the matrix. OK, so there's B details in that. So there's nothing worse than you wanting a middleman between you and your power. You want to see it for yourself. So if you try that yourself, you're going to be deaf, dumb and stupid. OK, where you have a bank. All right. And uh, you have this person who's supposed to take your wad of money in your bag during those days. OK, our suitcase and take it to the bank for you because you can't do it. But you never see the numbers. OK, you will be nervous. How how much of an insurance is that for you to have a person standing there saying, yeah, I'm going to take your money where it's supposed to be at. And they're broken poor. You're the millionaire. And this person, the middle person is a they broken poor. The thief was broken poor. He wasn't the one making that money. It was the guy sitting in a chair came up with the ideas and the uh, uh, the ownership of the business. The banker wasn't even that rich because he's just a banker. Otherwise, he wouldn't be a banker. You know, he's sitting up there uh, doing the loans and trying to make trades and make money himself. So therefore, obviously, you're the one who's going to be feeding the vampire. Therefore, when you have Agent Smith and those who are around you who wants to pilfer you and control you and change your mindset from being natural to being unnaturally ignorant. OK, you are the you are the wealthy rich person in which they are pilfering from. They are taking from you. They're going to take from you, whether you like it or not, because you're the one with the money and you give you put the money in your in their hand, which is time, energy and investment. Time, energy and investment, investment of your belief, not your knowing your belief, not your knowledge, your acknowledging your acknowledgement of the belief and indoctrination, not the knowledge of facts, history and what is actually going on. So you can pile the money in their hand. You don't think they're going to manipulate that and take it and run with it. You don't think they're going to take it for themselves and, and build a two million dollar church, a uh, the, buy a two million dollar jet or private airplane, uh, uh, live in a two million dollar house, uh, uh, build a, a two million dollar school to continue to indoctrinate even more people to make more money from. You don't think they're going to do that when you are blindfolding yourself and say, oh, I trust you with this. With this two million dollar wad of uh, you know money in a suitcase or bag, and you're broke and poor, all you make is all you probably have is maybe a hundred thousand dollars, and here I am throwing a million dollars in your hand, nine hundred thousand dollars more. Of course you're gonna be. You know what? Let me let me uh, maybe let's we'll switch this around. Then you're you're told that you are in. What, t t check this out. What makes you handicapped? What makes you? Uh, what makes them so confident in? with these indoctrination and the programming is because they want to ensure that you will never walk again by covering up your instincts, by blinding you by deception and programming and making you feel good by feel good music, by the choir, by the music that you can purchase at a, a music store or online with gospel and gossip uh, music that make you feel good. You know, uh, they got to there's certain words. I, I don't want to get it wrong. There's certain channels now. There's certain Christian channels now. That that sounds good. You know, makes your day good, right? You're sitting down, and it's almost like you're sitting down on a smoothie. You're, you're drinking a smoothie or a nice, uh, sweet uh, glass of tea. Okay, and that's how they do it. So you have the wife there. That's the form of the wife, making you feel good, making you comfortable, making you comfortable and senseless. So what will happen is you will never, so they can be ensured that you will never walk again. That means you will never be of instincts again. You will never be open minded. You will never break away from the matrix. You will never realize that you are deceived. You will never realize that you are manipulated. You will never. They are assured that you will never realize that they are the, the, the banker, the thief and the wife. But as soon as you step up, the, the soon as you become aware, be like, no, nah, I don't want I don't want the Jesus, dude. Give me the God. 
You know, I don't want the middleman. Give me, I want direct contact with my power. I don't need this, uh, what do you call that, a converter box in a, in a car or something like that. Just give me direct, just, just let me go straight to the engine power. This, this, this is to connect me straight to my power. What would happen, this is the same as if you're racing, you know, with engine lag or turbo lag or something like that. You don't want nothing that's going to prevent you when you push the gas pedal. You're not going to get instant response. You're going to lose that couple of seconds that it take for that response from the gas pedal to your engine. All right. Uh, to the throttle. Right. Is going to cost you your your race. It's going to cost you your success. OK. You want immediate response. As soon as you hit the gas pedal, you want that engine to surge forward, to blast open for that throttle to come full throttle. OK. And give you all the, the air, the air fuel and uh, combustion mixture, spark mixture. OK, that's what you want. OK, why would you live a life where you push the gas pedal and you got to wait for five minutes in order to get a response? You're not going to get nowhere. And that response is going to be extended further when you're sitting there letting somebody tell you who you are. Let somebody tell you what your power is when you supposed to know exactly what your power is. Of course, you don't know what your power is because you're sitting there and you accepting second rate indoctrination from gossip called gospel. And then you turn around and say, I love myself. The Lord loves me. How could the Lord love you? But he didn't ever see you face to face. How can some heavenly father love you, but never be there with you face to face ever, ever? How can they say they love you, but they never sit there on the opposite side of your dinner table and talk to you about life? The only person that would do that is your grandpa or your father or your mom. That's it. Or somebody else who cares about you, like me. I do something like that. I'm doing it now. Sit across the table talking to you. Maybe not face to face, but you hear my voice. Okay? So how can someone say they love you, but you never see them, you don't touch them, and they are far away, and you thinking they're in heaven somewhere? Okay? Or practically, what you don't want to realize is that a long time ago, a lot of those people are in a heaven that don't exist because they just they're just six feet underneath the ground and they're gone. OK, just like what everybody else do who is religious or non-religious or by way of a accident wreck or just a bad lifestyle or bad decisions. OK, where the reality is they just passed on and they're gone. And you don't want to realize that because we're so stuck on mythical thinking and theologians that want to indoctrinate you. That's some great smarts from a superior being are people who should be advanced by now in the 2020s. When you got all the information and common sense available to you. But again, you've been insured not to reach that. You've been insured not to reach that by the indoctrination and the programs to keep you sitting down in that retarded wheelchair. Too bad. So that should answer my question, your question, my emailer. Uh, his uh, first name is Charles. Charles, thank you for that. I appreciate it. And everybody else do as well, because when you email, you text in like that, you chime in. And uh, you support my program. Um, I, I appreciate it if you are getting that book, 2020 America Rise of Far Heart, and you are supporting my Patreon. Okay, I, I'm gratified by that. It makes it easier for me to teach and to be here for you because it does cost and there is time and investment, And but you are worth it. But you, I know, is worth it. I don't mind spending the time to do what I can to make sure that you are better and your mind is open. So thank you, Charles, for that and all the rest of you who uh, support and chime in. This is Leon C, a.k.a. Morpheus, and I have another audio for you. So I have to make this short and sweet. So stand by.